This is a 76-year-old man who presented with episodes of spacing out, followed by sudden loss of tone and falls. He had a remote history of seizures and had been on seizure medications for many years. His past seizures only presented with spacing out and episodes were not associated with loss of muscle tone or falls. So now he present he started presenting with spacing out, but these were also associated with sudden loss of muscle tone and falls. And after three such episodes, he was hospitalized for workup. In this brief tutorial, I will review his fascinating EEG. And at the end, we will go through the lessons learned from this patient and other patients like this. So let's start here. So the channels that end with the odd number are recording from the left side of the brain. Channels that end with the even number are recording from the right side of the brain. And channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline. I want you to pay specific attention to the ECG lead. Look at the rate now, look at the rhythm now, and see how it changes as the EEG progresses. Compare the left side of the brain and com with the right side of the brain and see if you see any asymmetries or abnormalities. So this is the next page here. You are able to see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm in, if you look carefully at P301. And if you look at P402, you do see some slowing there, but still there is some posterior dominant rhythm. If you go to the previous page, the posterior dominant rhythm is more clear. So this is the left side, this is the right side, and you're able to identify a posterior dominant rhythm of eight to nine hertz. Going back to the previous page here, you are starting to see an asymmetry. If you compare the left temporal region with the right temporal region, you see this polymorphic theta and delta activity in the right hemisphere. But at the same time, it's important to notice that as we start seeing this asymmetry between the two hemispheres, the ECG starts to get slow. So you're starting to see a bradycardia. Look at the interval between the QRS complexes and see how it is increasing. Now looking at the next page here, the asymmetry is way more clear. You can compare the left side, left temporal region with the right temporal region, and then also look at the ECG. What we are seeing on the EEG is actually an electrographic seizures. Electrographic seizures do not always present with spikes or sharp waves. Sometimes you can have this polymorphic slowing that comes out of the blue. It has a beginning and it has an end as we will see. And sometimes this change in the EEG is what triggers a change in the ECG, something that we call ictal bradycardia. And if the if a person gets into an asystole, we call it an ictal asystole. So this is very remarkable drop in the heart rate here corresponding with the start of an electrographic seizure. Looking at the next page, you see the end of the seizure. Right here, the rhythmic slowing or polymorphic slowing in the right temporal head region has ended here. The last three to four seconds of the EEG appear more or less normal. But if you look at the ECG, there is a very significant drop in the heart rate, almost four seconds of a pause. And this patient later had an, uh, later had a Holter recording, so continuous recording of the heart, which showed uh, pauses that lasted as long as seven seconds. This is the next page of this person, and the, even the ECG seems to normalize here. The EEG is appearing normal. So what are the lessons learned from this brief tutorial? Number one, epileptic seizures can lead to bradycardia and even asystole. Rarely, a syncope can trigger an epileptic seizure. Epileptic seizures and syncope can coexist. So do not always try to classify whether this is a seizure or a syncope, which in many cases may be the case, but always keep an open mind that both of these conditions can coexist. Syncope can lead to a seizure, a seizure can lead to a syncope, and both these conditions can coexist. In this particular patient, the patient was seen by cardiac electrophysiologists and diagnosed with a sick sinus syndrome. 
and he got a pacemaker placed and these syncopal episodes the sudden drop in tone uh that used to happen completely resolved and his seizures in fact were controlled with anti-epileptic medications so after a few years of following him in the clinic he has been discharged from the epilepsy clinic and i understand he's doing quite well thank you for your attention if you have had similar cases i would like you to share it in the comments so we all learn from each other. Thank you so much for your attention.